In this lesson, we're going to learn to prove some statements by using the principle of mathematical induction, or PMI for short. What is this? It is a principle. It is a property of the natural numbers we either choose to accept or reject. In English, it says that if we want to prove that a formula works for all natural numbers n, we start by showing it is true for the first one, which is the base step, and then show if it is true for a generic number we call k, it must be true for the next natural number, k plus 1. That's the inductive step. So we have four steps. The first one, we have to show that, the, that it is true for the first number, and so we would do that. That's usually a very easy step. Then we have our assumption statement that says assume p of k is true. So basically, we're going to stick a K in for all the N's and say it is true. And then the st third step, which is the hard one. We need to show that P of K implies that P of K plus 1 is true. And again, that arrow means imply. So we have to show. That means that's a very important step. It's the only tricky part. It's the most important one. And you have to show every little detail. Remember, you are proving something which means that you have to spell out your entire argument, just as if you were writing an English paper and you had to prove your thesis. And then the fourth step is you're going to end that proof. If you've ever set up some dominoes, you might have stacked them vertically and you wanted to push them all down. It's really kind of cool. Some really neat videos out there of people have contests with this. But this is going to hopefully show you how that mathematical induction works. Meaning, can you knock down the first domino? Yes, that's that P of 1 is true. Well, can you, what about knock some random domino in the middle? K. Yes, that's true. Then the next one, if we knock down that Kth domino, will it knock down the next domino? That's what we are proving. And then if we do all of the above, all the dominoes fall, and so our statement is true. That's the idea behind the principle of mathematical induction. Let's go through the steps. We're going to prove that if you add up all the odd numbers, you could just take and say if you had four odd, odd numbers and square it, 16. So that means if I added 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7, since that's four numbers, that's the same thing as getting 16. You can see that it works, but we're going to prove that it works. So we're going to show p of 1 is true. So we let n equals 1 and work it out. So we'd have 2 times 1 minus 1. Does that equal to 1 squared? And you don't have to show much work. That's 2 minus 1 equals 1 squared. Yes, it does. Just a little bit of arithmetic. Now we're going to write our assumption, our assumption statement. So we're going to assume that 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus dot, dot, dot plus 2k minus 1 equals k squared. Again, that's our assumption statement. And now here comes the hard part, but not that hard. We're going to show that if p of k is true, we want to prove that it's true for the next term. So how do we do that? We add the next term on the left side of the assumption statement Let's do that step. So we have 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus dot 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 plus 2k minus 1. What's the next term? Well, replace k with k plus 1. All right, so I've added the next term on the left side and then replace all the k's on the right side with k plus 1. So we're going to say k plus 1 squared. We're going to put a big question mark on top of that because that's what we're proving. How do we prove that? Not so bad. We're going to work on the left-hand side only. Look at this. Is that not our assumption statement? What does that equal to? Well, we said that equals to k squared. So we're going to replace our assumption statement with what it's equal to. We're still trying to prove that that equals to k plus 1 squared. Working on the left-hand side, just multiply that out, collect like terms, 
then can we factor that? That is true. And so thus, P of N is true. We're done. That wasn't so bad. Let's keep going. So we have some other proofs that you're going to need some more paper for. So we want to prove that the sum of the odd numbers without 1 is equal to n times n plus 2. All right, so step 1, we're going to show that p of 1 is true. And yes, you need to write out those words. So we're going to let n equal to 1. So we have 2 times 1 plus 1. Is that equal to 1 times 1 plus 2? So let's see, that's 2 plus 1, 1 times 3, 3 equals 3. Yes, that's true. Then we're going to assume true for n equals some arbitrarily number k. So this is our assumption statement. 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus dot dot dot. So what did we do? We just took our proof statement and replaced the n's with k's. And again, that's our assumption statement. And yes, you have to write out these words and write out these steps. Now we have to prove true for n equals 2k plus 1. How do we do that? We start by writing our assumption statement and adding the next term. What's the next term? We're going to replace k with k plus 1. That would be the next term. On the other side, we replace k with k plus 1. And again, put a big question mark, that's what we're proving. So take the left hand side. That's your assumption statement. What did your assumption statement equal to? It equal to k times k plus 2. So we're replacing our assumption statement with what it equal to. And then here I'm just going to rewrite that as k plus 1 times k plus 3. And again, we're still proving that that is true. Working on the left-hand side, let's multiply that out. Collect like terms. And how about factor it? Does that equal to k plus 1 times k plus 3, as in that side? Yes, it does. So, thus, we're done. That's the proof. Let's do that next one. So we have 1 plus 5 plus 5 squared. And this one's going to be a little bit harder. Have to do some kind of tricky stuff with some exponents. So pay attention. All right, so step one, prove true for n equals to 1. So we have 5 to the 1 minus 1. Does that equal to 5 to the 1 minus 1? So that's 5 to the 0. 5 to the 0 is 1. That's 1, so yes. Second step, Assume true for n equals to k. We're writing out our assumption statement. And one more time. Yes, you have to write all that out. Your paper should look pretty much like the screen, maybe a little bit neater. Okay, third step. We have to prove true for n equals k plus 1. 
So we take our assumption statement as is and add the next term. So in place of k we write k plus 1 and on the other side we replace k with k plus 1. And that's what we're proving. That's our assumption statement. What does it equal to? Here, I'm going to rewrite that as plus 1 minus 1. That's just k. And I've got to make it look like that. How am I going to do that? Well, how about let's distribute just like we did on those other problems. 1 fourth. And no, that's not 5 fourths. It's 1 fourth times 5 to the k minus 1 fourth plus 5 to the k. Now, would you not agree that that's 1 times 5 to the k? This is 1 fourth times 5 to the k. So these are like terms. So we can add the coefficients. So 1 fourth plus 1 is 5 fourths. So I have 5 fourths times 5 to the k then minus that 1 fourth. Go over that again. Make sure you understand that. What's the next thing I can do? I can then factor out a 1 fourth. Again, trying to make it look like that. Almost. Rules of exponents, that's 5 to the first power. So I can keep the base and add the exponents. Does that equal to what we were trying to prove? Yes, it does. We are done. So some tricky stuff right there. Lots of rules of exponents. Let's do that last example where we're proving the sum of the cubes is equal to 1 fourth n squared times n plus 1 squared. So step one, prove true for n equals to 1. Because that would be 4, and so yes, that works. Step two, assume true for n equals to k. Here's our very important assumption statement. Yes, that's kind of a pain to write out every time. Okay, so our third step, prove true for n equals k plus 1. Again, we take our assumption statement and we add the next term, so that would be k plus 1 cubed, and we're seeing does it equal to over here, wherever there's a k, we're going to put in k plus 1. That's what we're proving. So again, here's our assumption statement. We're going to replace it with that. So we have 1 fourth k squared times k plus 1 squared plus k plus 1 cubed, does that equal to 1 fourth times k plus 1 squared? And then I'm going to write that as k plus 2 squared. That's what I'm trying to prove. Well, I certainly do not want to foil all that out and then try to factor it. That is one option. But I see that this has a 1 fourth, that has a 1 fourth. It would be nice if they both had a 1 fourth. So I'm going to kind of use a little trick here and rewrite this 1 in front of there as 1 fourth times 4 times k plus 1 cubed. That's legal. That's just 1. 
and now I'm going to factor this by taking out a greatest common factor of 1 fourth k plus 1 squared because they now have both have a 1 fourth and they both both have a k plus 1 to the second power so what would that leave me? It would leave me a k squared out of this term, then the 4, and another k plus 1. So inside those parentheses, well, that's a plus sign. So that would be 4k plus 4. And then I can factor that trinomial as k plus 2 squared. Does that equal my right hand side? Yes, it does. So again, there was a little trick here. We're factoring out a GCF. The previous example had an exponent kind of tricky thing, but the key thing is that you've got to have all the steps in the right order, don't skip any.